Nolan Gorman continues his torrid run, but a tough night for JoJo Romero leaves the Cardinals as losers in three of their last four. Why was he still in the game? We'll talk about it today on Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also on YouTube. If you haven't seen us there yet, why don't you stop on by? We're getting close to 10,000 subscribers. Would love for you to be one of those. If you haven't signed up already, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, interact with us, and hit that notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Supply House. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to get parts fast, shop for your next plumbing, HVAC, or electrical job, and get fast shipping from coast to coast at Supplyhouse.com. So Sunday night's extra innings win against the Phillies was, in my opinion, a huge win for the Cardinals, for their for their psyche, for their confidence. You know, you you go to Philly, and if you get swept, you, you'd feel pretty demoralized after you left there, right? Even though you've been playing some, some pretty good baseball, winning baseball, that ha- has seen them soar up the standings into wild card contention, which has been great. You get swept, and it, it would have just left a bad taste in your mouth, right? But instead, they get the win in extra innings on Sunday night, beat arguably the best team in baseball on national television, and it gives you some uh, some extra pep in your step as uh, you make your way down to Houston. Now, the series in Philly wasn't a bad one. Game one, solid baseball game. Could have gone either way. Game two, the Phillies get to your ace, Sonny Gray, and uh, beat you rather soundly. But in game three on Sunday, the Cardinals had that game pretty much at hand uh, the whole time. They, they they give the Phillies four unearned runs to keep them in it. But Lynn was strong. Bullpen was huge. And that sends you to Houston feeling a, a lot better about your, yourself, despite all of the defensive miscues, which continue to happen. You had two more errors on Monday night in Houston. Started to get out of hand a little bit. And these aren't like errors where, like you saw the Alex Bregman play on Monday night where he makes this amazing diving play to his right at third base and then tries to get the runner at first, throws this, uh, throw the, throws the ball over the first baseman's head. You're not getting those kind of errors. You know, you're, you're, you're getting routine plays. A lot of routine ground ball stuff that usually means, you know, a, a lack of a lack of concentration. You know, it's simple ground balls. Mason Wynn. Missed an easy one. Nolan Gorman's on Monday night. Eh, the ball came off of Kittredge's glove after it went through his legs. <laughs> you know, Kit probably should have had that one. Uh, Gorman comes in, tries to get it on the short hop, doesn't work out. Um, but a lot of these just seem like either lack of concentration or they're trying to rush things a little bit, trying to throw the ball before you've fully received it, before it's all the way into your glove. You're trying to do things a little too quick, uh, bobbling it when you're trying to make the transfer over to your throwing hand. Uh, all three of your normal infielders and Nato, Wynn, Gorman, they've all got strong arms, you know, outstanding arms for for Wynn and Gorman for sure up the middle. And there's no need for them to be rushing things. So hopefully they'll get it turned around sooner rather than later because it's kind of getting frustrating watching all these very simple plays turned into errors, which means extra pitches for your guys on the mound. And uh, it means longer innings. So Monday night in Houston, the Cardinals were facing future Hall of Famer Justin Verlander. We know he's really good. You know, the resume speaks for itself. But the Cardinals come out thumping. You know, you get solo home runs from Burleson and Gorman in the first. Gorman would go on to hit another one in this game. Gave the Cardinals a 4-2 lead at one point. Uh, We'll talk more about Nolan Gorman in segment two. But Gorman somewhat quietly now has 13 home runs. 13 home runs on the season. That ties him for third in the National League with the Mets' Pete Alonso. One of the best power hitting players in baseball. And he's only trailing superstars, Shohei Otani and Bryce Harper. They're both in second place with 14. And then, of course, Cardinal legend Marcelo Zuna's got 17. Uh, it's unbelievable what he's been doing the last two seasons and two seasons with the Cardinals. Just real quick Ozuna had a combined 52 home runs, 23 and 29 in the two seasons he was in St. Louis. 
which is fine. We like those numbers, but they're not anything crazy. Uh, did that in a little over a thousand at bats in a Cardinals uniform. In his last 741 at bats with the Braves, he's got 57 home runs. Like 40 last year. He's got 17 already this year. I don't know what has changed for this guy, but I wish that was the dude the Cardinals had than the guy that the Cardinals ended up having. You know, he never lived up to the expectations of that big trade. And in Atlanta, he's he seems to be just fine. Um, anyway, so the Cardinals. They get the four to three lead at one point against Verlander. Kyle Gibson strong again on Monday night, five and two thirds innings. He strikes out eight. Andrew Kittredge comes in to uh, get him out of a bases loaded jam in the sixth. Romero comes in to get him out of trouble again in the seventh. But in the eighth inning, it all comes crumbling down. Alex Bregman, who I mentioned earlier, ties it up. He yanks a change up that just floated over the heart of the plate, and he ends up smashing it over the Crawford boxes in left field to make it four to four. And if you were listening to the telecast, Jimmy Edmonds was talking about it, uh, it, it, it perfectly. He He's like, well, I wouldn't be throwing off-speed pitches to Bregman. And clearly, all he's trying to do is yank it over the ball in left field. And if you allow him to get out in front of the ball, that's exactly what he's going to do. And I would tell you, not two pitches later, that's exactly what happens. Then you get a single. There's a sack bunt that moves him over. He gets the big strike out of Jose Abreu, who clearly the Houston Astros fans hate. Right? <laughs> they boot him mercilessly. And you think JoJo at this point might get out of this whole thing, but then Yanir Diaz yanks the first pitch he sees over the short porch in left field and uh, gives the Astros a 6-4 lead. Strohs tack on another one on an RBI double by Jose Altuve. Uh, that, run, that runner ended up being on base because of uh, uh, an error on Mason when final score 7-4. Uh, asked after the game about leaving Romero in against uh, a, a bunch of right-handed hitters. And that was something that was a big debate after the game online. Like, everybody was talking about this. Like, why the heck was Romero still in that game when it was all right-handers coming up? I had the same question. I had a feeling Ali had a good explanation for it. I wasn't like I was bashing Ali by any means. I was like, oh, okay, I'm curious what, what, what the reasoning was. And Ali confirmed that after the game, only the only guys available were Kyle Leahy and Ryan Lutos. He said that he wanted to see, he just kind of sided with Jojo Romero's experience and how good he's been and was like, you know what? I trust Jojo. I know him pretty well and I'm going with his experience and it didn't work out. It just didn't work out. Um, I was skeptical about leaving Jojo in as well, but after hearing the reasoning, I mean, are you, are you upset with Ali that he stuck with him? You know, he has been great all year. You know, can you imagine the backlash if he had actually pulled JoJo, brought in one of the two youngsters in Lutos or Leahy, and then they were the ones who got burned instead? I mean, the trolls would be crucifying Ali Marmol on Tuesday. But he stuck with this guy, and it just didn't work out. And this is also where not having other veteran reliable relievers like Giovanni Gallegos as much as people were fed up with him and Keenan Middleton not having him so far this year that's where those guys missing come into play you think Ollie leaves Jojo out there if he's got either one of those guys available instead of the young guys that he just doesn't know all that well and hasn't uh learned to trust just yet hell no <laughs> hell no he doesn't he wouldn't do that but that's where we are. Romero had been one of the top guys for him all season. Why would he turn his back on him now and yank him for a couple of youngsters? Despite the being the lefty righty matchups, like uh, just a, it was just an unfortunate spot. The bullpen's been used a whole lot and they got burned this time. They got burned this time. All right. This wasn't game seven of the world series. Okay. It's not the end of the world. It's a tough loss. Yes. Considering you led for seven innings. I understand that you were able to knock around one of the best pitchers of all time in Justin Verlander. And for once, your normally dependable bullpen wasn't able to hang on to the lead. It, it's not the end of the world. We don't have to burn the thing down, okay? You just can't dwell on this, all right? And I don't think the guys are going to dwell on this either. You've got to you got to brush it off, and you got to get back in there for game two. And I, people are like, oh, man, this is the slide. This is where the Cardinals go in the toilet. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't think it's a setback game by any means. If anything, I think the way that I've seen this group respond to tough losses, I think it's going to piss them off is what's going to happen more than anything. And hopefully the boys come out aggressive, come out angry on Tuesday night 
and uh, get to swinging early once again. All right. You just got to move on to the next day. Uh, looking in the clubhouse afterwards, like seeing interviews with people. It didn't look like everybody was all, it wasn't like, oh my God, we lost this one. No, it didn't seem like that at all. They were like, hey, you know, we should have had it. We didn't. We'll get back to it. So that's what I'm hoping they'll get to uh, tonight. Speaking of aggressive, more on the surging Nolan Gorman and how good he's really been and how good he has been through his Cardinals career so far. Coming up next on Locked on Cardinals. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trade, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com, it is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. They're easy to use website. It's just packed with helpful resources and the latest product information to help you get the job done right. That's what you want. You want to get it done right. You want to get it done quick. You want to get it done efficiently and not pay a whole lot to do it, right? Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. And if you need help with an order, they got you covered there too. Get expert support and industry leading service from the friendliest folks in the business. And you get to talk to a real person every time. No computers, no robots, no AI, real people. Pros of the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining supplyhouse.com's free trade master program. Every trade master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. So join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at supplyhouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. Are you watching Fox Sports on ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Then make the switch, if you haven't already, to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today will bring you the can't-miss analysis that you want, the opinions, the news, and it's all streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Leave your comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter. X anytime you want. Uh, your fan feedback is always welcome and encouraged. The good, the bad, the ugly. Send it to me. We're going to have a, a, a fan feedback episode coming up here real, real soon because I like getting your guys' opinions out there. I don't, I don't want it being me doing all the talking and only my thoughts being heard on this podcast. I need you to be involved too, so uh, don't be shy about it, okay? Uh, Nolan Gorman. Let's talk about Stormin. Nolan Gorman right now, uh, whack two more home runs on Monday night, second multi home run, uh, game of the season. So far, he now has three in his past two games, nine in his past 19 games. And as I mentioned earlier, he has very quietly snuck his way up into the upper echelon of national league power hitters. Now his nine home runs since May 10th lead the national league His five home runs in the Cardinals current road trip tied with that son of a gun, Alex Bregman from the Astros who burned the birds uh, last night in the ninth inning uh, for the most in the major since the trip began on May 27th. So you got two of the hottest power hitting infielders in the game right now in uh, Gorman and Bregman in this series. Now over the first seven games of the road trip, Gorman has gone eight of 26. That's a 308 batting average, five home runs, nine ribbies. The dude is on what we like to call in the gambling world, a heater right now. So John Denton, who covers the Cardinals for MLB.com, Got some quotes from uh, the man himself, Nolan Storm and Gorman, after last night's game, uh, talking about his approach recently during this hot stretch. And uh, he said, quote, just trying to keep things simple and look for good pitches to hit and get a good swing off. Just kind of diving a little bit more into what I want to see and sticking to that, really, which sounds simple enough, right? Gorman, Gorman is so strong that the ball is going to fly off his bat if and when he makes contact. He reminds me. A lot of Max Muncy for the Dodgers. You know, he's um, going to strike out a lot. A lot of swing and miss. But when he connects, that ball is going to go flying. And that's really the most frustrating part about Gorman's game, at least for me. I don't know how you feel about it, but the number of strikeouts. Strikeouts bug me. I, I hate it when the guys can't put the ball in play. But when it comes to Nolan Gorman, it's just something that you got to get used to. You got to get over it. Because we knew that this was part of his makeup as a hitter. This is not a surprise. Nobody was caught off guard 
by when he got to the major leagues that he started striking out a bunch. All of these swings and misses were expected. He did this in the minor leagues too. And that's why nobody on the Cardinals side of things were freaking out about it. And this is who he is, and you just you just have to accept the fact that you're going to see big, big strikeout totals when it comes to Nolan Gorman. But when it goes with a lot of a lot of home runs, a lot of doubles, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, extra base hits. You're not going to get as upset about it. You know, if he has an 0 for 5 day with four strikeouts, you got to get over it because at some point he's going to have some days like he did on Monday where he hits you a couple of bombs or Sunday where he gets you that long fly, gets you that key RBI double, drives in the winning run and becomes your hero. The Nolan Gorman roller coaster is going to have plenty of peaks and valleys and you just have to be willing to ride out the bad times so that you can enjoy the good ones. Now, my man Bernie Miklas over at uh, scoopsdannymac.com. If you haven't been there yet, that's where he does his writing these days. I know we have a lot of people who were fans of Bernie Miklas when he used to write for the uh, Post-Dispatch. Um, obviously, you can hear him on KFNS, but uh, when he writes, he does it at scoopswithdannymac.com, and he loves to throw out fun stats. The guy is amazing at research. So, um, And he, he put some stuff out there about Nolan Gorman recently. Uh, here's some of it. Heading into last night's game, he had 52 career home runs. He's now got 54, obviously, after hitting two. Uh, but Bernie writes, among players that were no older than 24 years or in 24 days, those 52 home runs rank third behind only Albert Pujols. You've heard of him, who had a preposterous 114 home runs at this point. And then Joe Medwick with 61. So you got Medwick, who's a Hall of Famer. Pujols going to be a Hall of Famer. You know, Gorman's home run totals, uh, they're elite. You know, he, he's got the most by a Cardinal at that age, 24 years old in 24 days, who primarily plays second base, uh, beating Colton Wong's 23. Who thought Colton Wong had uh, that many home runs by this point? Uh, among franchise second basemen that age, Gorman has the most RBIs, which is 139. Top slugging percentage at 455. The number one OPS at 770. Best OPS plus. Second on the list, as far as the RBIs goes, Bernie points this out, the beloved Red Shandies had 129 RBIs. Red, Hall of Famer as well. Bernie also mentions a slew of other stats uh, because he loves researching numbers, and I love reading his articles because of this. So I'm going to link the article in our, our description here and in the show notes for you listening online so you can check out all of them because I'm not going to put all of them in here. Just uh, We'll give you a few more of them, though. Uh, during MLB's modern era, which began in 1901, only 97 players have banged at least 52 homers by age 24 years and 24 days. Uh, you know who had exactly 52 home runs at the same age that Gorman is now? Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire. I'm assuming pre-steroid Mark McGuire at this point. And among hitters age 24 years, 24 days or younger, Gorman has more home runs. You're going to see some very familiar names on the, on the list here. Vladimir Guerrero Sr., Frank Thomas, Dick Allen, Carl Yastrzemski, Jim Rice, Orlando Cepeda, Will the Throw Clark, Dale Murphy, Harold Baines, Kid Herbeck, and a whole bunch more. He's ahead of these people. Among left-handed uh, batters at this age and younger, Gorman's 52 home runs rank 31st on the list during the modern era. He has more right now than the number hit at the same age by notables like Willie McCovey, Roger Maris, and Billy Williams. Again, this is just a small portion of the stats that Bernie Miklas throws out in his article. So go check it out for yourself. But some pretty recognizable names, wouldn't you say? Uh, again, he's got a ton more in this article. So check it out for yourself. Gorman just has a special ability to do some serious damage against opposing pitchers. He just does. And as infuriating <laughs> as the strikeouts can be, it's something we are just going to have to live with. That way you can enjoy the streaks like he's on now that help the Cardinals win more ball games. I know they've lost three of their last four, but he's been a main reason why they've been able to climb back up into the standings and get into that wild card position. So it's just too bad Monday's performance was wasted. You know, two home runs. Burleson, I should give him a shout out too, hits another home run. I mean, who would have thought that it was going to be Burleson and Gorman leading the way and not Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado when it comes to this offense? Who saw that coming? Not this guy. Not this guy. But the great thing about baseball is there's always tomorrow. 
There's always tomorrow. So we're going to do the power rankings, which came out, and uh, talk about Tuesday's matchup uh, coming up next here on Locked on Cardinals. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. You can get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Price Picks community today. So you got the NBA and the Stanley Cup Finals. They're here, and they mean more on Price Picks, and so do the star players. You get boosted payouts on select basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. So you got the Dallas Mavericks, the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, St. Louis guy. You rooting for him in the finals? Or are you going to go with the Mavericks, who I know they got Kyrie Irving, who's not the most popular player in the world, but Luka Doncic, special, special. Who's a better player, him or Tatum? What do you think? Anyway, but that's stuff you can bet on. Who's going to have better games? No better no better way to cash in on what's going on in uh, in the baseball world. Cardinal baseball action than, than, than price picks. Add your favorite players from the diamond. You can pick other people. It doesn't have to be Cardinals. You can pick some other players if you want. Uh, but you add them to your price picks lineups, uh, strikeouts, RBIs, home runs, stolen bases. Take your pick of more or less and then add them to your price picks lineup today. And you can now win up to 100 times your money with baseball only lineups at Price Picks. If you submit a winning lineup featuring four demon squares, you'll cash in big time on the biggest moments of baseball's early season. So download the app today, use the code locked on MLB, and get that first deposit match up to $100. Gives you a chance to win more money. All right. Who doesn't want more money? I know this guy does. I know you do too, probably. So download the app today, use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Don't let all that knowledge that's up in your cranium go to waste. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app that's here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows which cover every league. You can find Locked On Sports today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And for uh, hockey fans out there, Locked On Blues, our girl Haley, uh, she's getting really close to that 1,000 subscriber mark on uh, on YouTube. She was uh, like 30-something short late last night. So uh, if you are a fan of, of the Blues, which I am, and I'm pretty sure you are too because that's what we do in St. Louis, Blues hockey, Cardinal baseball, those are the two main guys I know. Soccer's huge as well, but Blues, Cardinals, come on now. Battle Hawks now, obviously. Um, but if, if you haven't subscribed to her on YouTube yet, do, do her a solid and get over there and just uh, click that subscribe button, all right? Uh, we got new Locked On Power rankings. Those have dropped, and for the most of the season, the Cardinals have been near the bottom. You know, they've been hovering around that number 25 mark, uh, and for good reason, because they weren't playing great. They hadn't won many ball games, but I don't think anybody ever – said hey these guys are garbage and this is a terrible team and they they're gonna stink all year uh as far as people who watch the games okay i mean i know we got some fans out there who don't think all that highly of what the cardinals are doing and that's fine that's your opinion but most people around the league believe that the cardinals are a better team than what they showed in the first month and a half and they're starting to see that turnaround and now you're seeing it in the power rankings um you know the this is a team that I thought was going to be a 500 type of team. When I came into the season, I said 84 wins. So like an 84 and 78 season was something that I thought was very attainable by the Cardinals and they're living up to that. So um, the Cardinals have come up. <laughs> they're coming up in the standings and they, they kind of make a decent jump this week. Uh, they're all the way up to number 15. You can see it there on uh, the YouTube page. They are up to number 15 right now. They've had to win a lot of games recently to get there and still haven't made it past that 500 mark just yet. But when you look at the, the standings, there they are knocking on the door of the NL wildcard spot along with the Cubs and the Giants. Giants just lost Blake Snell, although he wasn't pitching all that well when he was out there. Um, and they're just behind the Padres and then the Braves who have dealt with serious, serious injuries. They've lost Spencer Strider and Ronald Acuna Jr. Cy Young candidate and the reigning MVP. Some tough losses for the Braves. Um, Cubs are ranked 18th. Giants are ranked 17th, which is uh, who the Cardinals are kind of, you know, in the in the mix with in that wild card right now. Padres are number 11. Braves are number 7. The Cardinals are surrounded uh, by Jack Flaherty and the Tigers at number 14. 
just ahead of them. Jack Flaherty having a bounce back year, man. Uh, does he end up sticking with the Tigers this year? Probably not. I'm guessing they'll, uh, if they're if they're out of it, I should say, uh, they'll end up shipping him to uh, uh, another contender. Maybe he ends up with the Dodgers after all. We'll see. But uh, the Tigers aren't going anywhere. They're 30 and 30 on the year. And just sent down former number one overall pick, Spencer Torkelson. Uh, then you've got at number 16, the underachieving Toronto Blue Jays, who the uh, Cardinals are one spot ahead of. Blue Jays 28 and 31, still got a lot of big, well known players on their lineup. Uh, Vladdy Jr., Bo Bichette, George Springer, but underperforming big time, big time. You know, you think some of these Cardinals players are underperforming. How about what's going on in Toronto? Bo Bichette has never hit under 290 as a major league hitter, and he's batting 236 now. Like he's having a rough go. Springer hitting 211. Vladdy Jr., a.k.a. Mr. Home Run Derby himself, he's only got six home runs, and we're in June. Just wild things happening north of the border. Uh, Cardinals are, are right where they belong, in my opinion, in the middle of all of this. Uh, at the top of the mountain, you've got the Yankees and then the Phillies. I personally, in my voting, had the Phillies at number one and the Yankees number two. I, I just I just like the Phillies pitching better. I just do. Uh, Orioles come in at number three. Dodgers at four. Guardians at five. Break them up in Cleveland, by the way. What? What is happening in Cleveland? Amazing how they've been able to just reel off win after win this year, man. A lot of props to them. Uh, at the bottom of everything, you've got the A's at number 26, the Marlins at 27. News this morning, uh, Marlins just DFA'd outfielder uh, Visael uh, Garcia, despite being in year three of his four-year deal that he signed, which was like 50-something million dollars. The Marlins are eating $24 million to get him off the team. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy to me. I mean, they're in last with him. <laughs> like, what is he possibly doing so wrong that they got to eat $24 million to get rid of this guy, to show this dude the door? But they're doing it, so Garcia is going to be out there. Uh, the Rockies at number 28. They just got murdered by the Reds on Monday. The Angels at 29. Somebody save Mike Trout. Mo, Mo, how do we get Mike Trout into a Cardinals uniform? I know he gets hurt a lot, but still, somebody's got to get him out of there. Uh, and, and he kind of fits the bill for the Cardinals, right? He's not a super exciting attention guy. He's kind of dull and boring too. He fit right in anyway. And then you got the white Sox and the legendary Tommy fan. We tried to beat up Wilson Contreras, his brother on Sunday. So that's what's going on, uh, with the power rankings right now. Uh, I don't really have an argument with, uh, the way any of that stuff looks. I think, uh, they're all pretty good. So well done to everybody who voted, uh, tonight's matchup. For the Cardinals in Houston, Andre Pallante coming off that stellar start in Cincinnati on Wednesday, going up against the Astros, Spencer Arigetti. Arigetti is a 24-year-old right-hander, 3-5 and five so far this year. The ERA is pushing 6, but he has pitched better recently. Just had a six, uh, six innings of shutout ball against the AOS leading Seattle Mariners. He's got a good whiff rate, throws a four-seamer, he's got a cutter, he's got a curveball. That's what he sticks with mostly, but he does have the occasional sweeper and changeup that he'll bring out here and there. But uh, lineup-wise, I'm sure we'll see a good mix of lefties and righties again tonight. I liked the lineup last night. There was nothing wrong with things offensively, really. Uh, when you go up against somebody as tough as Justin Verlander is, the Houston Astros bullpen shut things down after Verlander left the game. Uh, we have not heard anything, at least I haven't, about Mason Wynn as of yet. We're, we're at 12.30 uh, St. Louis time. Haven't heard anything about him yet. He was banged up a couple of times last night. His back, and then it was his uh, his hand was bothering him a little bit after that one play that uh, that squeaked through the infield. But I don't know. It wouldn't shock me it, it, to see Brandon Crawford in uh, in the lineup tonight if Wynn is feeling a bit sore today. You know, so Cardinals have made 21 errors in their last 18 games. Got to clean it up, boys. Got to clean it up. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Please like and subscribe on YouTube and help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and we will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.